real solution for the human problem is the true and immense, glorious awakening of the soul. When we look at human existence from a more superficial kind of day-to-day -day perspective, not going too deep, is quite okay. Maybe a love story, maybe something nice at work, maybe a good movie, a good entertainment, a little success, a little failure. Life is pretty much okay, it's comfortable, mostly. When we look at it from a bigger span of time and a little bit more existentially, including our imminent death, the death of loved ones, breakup, disappearing, all sorts of negative things that happened or that will for sure happen, death is imminent for all of us. And if we contemplate what happened to these people that were here 300 years ago, we know nothing of them, maybe we know a few of them. And the people that were here 10,000 years ago, nothing and no one. Why to go through difficulties, everything disappears. So when we look at it a bit more existentially, a bit more rationally, it looks a bit more grim. But then luckily, from the depth of despair, there's an even higher and more complete perspective, a soulful perspective, deep in the heart of everyone, including the biggest atheists, the biggest tyrants, there's a vivid soul, a living soul, undeniable soul. It might not be accessed at the moment, but it is there, alive and burning. And when the soul awakens and burns and becomes visible, great meaning appears. Tremendous, unshakable optimism, peace, hope, love. When we live from the ego, it's an effort to be kind, to be nice, to be loving. It's even an effort to be socially acceptable. The perspective of the ego is speculative, is a constant imagination. But what if the soul doesn't exist? But what if it does? And how do you discover it? Do you need to believe in someone? Do you need to adopt a dogma? Do you need to pray to that direction or pay that priest? Do you need to make the mind quiet? You don't need to add something to discover your soul. You need to reduce something. The ego is not real, but it's loud. It's very loud. The ego consists of the constant speculation of who we are. We can stop chewing when we finish eating, but we can't stop thinking when we finish thinking. We finish thinking and we immediately start thinking again. And if you look at all your thoughts, they always have an imagination of me. I'm thinking of an argument where I am, a success where I am, a worry that concerns me, a memory in which I am all the time. And because we think and imagine a me, and we get emotional about that imagination, as you drool when you think of ice cream and get aroused when you have an erotic thought, as you get physically in distress when we think of a fight, when we constantly think of I, the consequence is our soul becomes invisible and life sucks. But we can stop with some training. One minute is enough to see the soul. Five minutes, you get a whole wonderful view. Twenty minutes, you see the glory of your soul. Twenty minutes of a silent mind. But start with a minute. There is somebody there quietly speaking all the time in the heart, but it is polite and kind. And there is another voice, loud, rude, selfish, that covers the deep voice in the existence of the soul. Once the ego subsides through silence, the soul appears tremendously real. The ego is not more real than a hiccup in front of the reality of the soul. And you can reach the soul through a silent mind, you can reach the soul through intense love, through service to other, through understanding. You can reach the soul by near-death experience. People's lives are transformed because they meet their soul. And when the soul is there, love is not a result of an effort or of a process of socializing. You don't need to force yourself to be loving and kind. It's bursting out of you with so much life, kindness, care, compassion, joy, creativity. Everything is transfigured in glory. In the most difficult life circumstances, they are alchemized. They are uplifted into something glorious, continuously. That's what the soul is doing. And that's why life has such a tremendous meaning when it arises from the soul. The soul is not an invention. It is the absence of all inventions. It's not a, 
a human or a social conviction, not an imagination, not a speculation. In the absence of all of these ideas of who we are, when all that is discarded, something very real appears. There is a real person speaking to us, but there is a radio so loud we can't hear the real person. And if we turn off the radio, we see the real person and the radio doesn't look so real anymore. If you look at life seriously, responsively, lucidly, and you are willing to experiment with this silence, with this love, with this service to others, with this intense spiritual practice, with something that leads you to your soul, and you get a glimpse of it, not because someone said, but as your direct experience of this most extravagant love and peace and bliss that is your own nature. Once you have that experience, the only rational and responsible thing would be to attain that and to stabilize one's life at the level of the soul. Because meaning comes from there, love from there, or rather from here, peace from here. And whatever it is that we are searching for in the outside, we are searching for it on the outside so that we can have peace, so that we can have happiness, so that we can feel that our life has a meaning and a purpose, so we can feel bliss. And all that appears from the soul. And then the soul will go and serve exactly where it's supposed to. It will follow its dharma, its place in the universe. It can't help it. That is the very nature of the soul and the only way for a sane human life. It is the only real solution for the human problem. It is the true and immense, glorious awakening of the soul.